Okay, so now we're going to look at aerial perspective. An aerial perspective is used to create depth. A lot of the master painters, they'll just pretty much fade the background of their painting, which will create the illusion of depth. Just like when you're on a hike and you overlook the cliff side and you can see the cliffs fading more and more as the distance increases, that's the particles and the dust in the air creating this atmospheric aerial perspective, this illusion of depth. And we can take that technique and incorporate it into our paintings, which is what Rubens has done. So right here, he's fading the background. So I just go down. If he was walking or taking a photo, he might have seen this scene, taken a picture, and this could have been all dark. But what he does in his painting is he makes sure that blue is a light blue, which helps the depth and helps these guys pop out a little bit more. That's one other thing that HDR kills is aerial perspective. It embosses the clouds and doesn't allow for that depth to occur. You just gotta be careful with that, not to overdo that kind of stuff. All right, so there's aerial perspective, basically. Let's move on to gazing direction. All right, so with gazing direction, when it's something complex like this, and there's multiple characters in it, sometimes it's hard to determine the gazing direction, but it's basically the left to right balance. So you'll just take the bulk of the composition and try to see which side it's further on, further on the left or further on the right, and then you'll determine if the balance is correct. We add our lines from this side to this side, which is basically the bulk of the image. Got this guy in shadow and this guy in shadow. So since we're further on the left than the right, we'll say that the gazing direction of the image is from left to right. Okay, so it's it's going from left to right on that one. And we can look at the direction of the lion. This guy's definitely looking that way. These guys are looking that way. So this guy's looking that way. This guy's looking this way because these lines and the direction that people are looking, that actually directs people's eyes, the viewer's eyes, into the composition and can be incorporated into the entire design. So this guy's looking that way, this guy is pretty much looking at where he's stabbing that line, and this guy is freaked out. So let's leave the horse, he's looking that way. So Rubens definitely knows what he's doing. He's guiding the eye, incorporating all kinds of movement. So he's got all this looking in this direction, and then this looking in this direction. So he's got all kinds of movement, all kinds of action. The balance of the piece is going from left to right. The bulk of this area is further left, but then he's got, he adds this guy, which is in high contrast, to help visually balance the composition. So he's he knows what he's doing. He's got a little bit further left, and then he's got this guy, which is helping the balance. That's gazing direction. Now let's go into breathing room. Breathing room is, again, it's a bit tough on a very complex composition like this. So the breathing room is the top to bottom balance. So draw the line out and find the top of the composition, which is basically this part, and then the bottom of the composition, which is right around here. Again, you're just looking at the bulk of the composition right here. What I mean by the bulk is above here is just a hand, a hat, a little bit of hair, but right here it gets real thick with action. And down here the same thing. Got the line going across this guy's thigh, a hand, a head, and then across to this guy. So below it we've just got an arm, a foot, Okay, just a couple elements below this line. So that's the bulk. Since he's got this centered, he's basically got it pretty much balanced from top to bottom. Since we can see this horizon line in the background, we know his composition weighted towards the bottom, and he's got a lot of action pointing towards the bottom. So it doesn't give us that feeling that everything's floating up in the air. It gives us a nice feeling of gravity. Let's go into radiating lines. Usually radiating lines will direct the eyes to a certain point, 
in the composition and they'll be generated from a point off the grid or from a point off the composition. Let's see how Rubens does this. So all I do is I start with a point, say this point meets this point. So those two are definitely radiating and then you just follow around to see what else locks in. So we got this lion's arm there, the horse's hoof. We start generating these. So already we can tell God is good. So it's definitely pointing us towards the line. The line's hand and the hoof create a line. This one is created. That'd be cool if that dagger was lined up also. Okay, so he's directing our attention towards this line. This guy's foot and the calf. You're starting to see this stuff. I mean, this guy's good. Him and Bourgeois are really, really good. So we'll put that one in place. The edge of that cloth there. Of course, that's going to lock in. Along the staff. This arm's locking in. I'm not making this stuff up. This guy's a master designer. That's good. Okay, so this guy's arm to this guy's knee. It's creating a line. Even the shadow there. All he's doing is directing our eyes and he's unifying these edge to edge relationships. Unity is huge within composition. Definitely make sure you incorporate it. This guy's cloak right here, even the edge of this hair. Sometimes we can see it in the clouds. This one up here, see this edge, this edge right here. You could strengthen those techniques by using coincidence too. This guy's the back of his arm. Oh, the top of his hat. Yeah, and the bridge of his nose. So Rubens is using all these lines to direct us towards that line, which is the center of attention. All right. So that's radiating lines. Sometimes I get the location wrong. But in this case, I'm pretty sure it's right on there. Okay, so it doesn't lock into his grid. Another way to do radiating lines is basically like this, how this guy's arm's coming down. You can see it's radiating from this point up here. So you just generate it from the point of the grid. Okay? This one's coming up from this guy's torso. And you start generating these lines. Let me see if there's something here. All I'll do is test it. Select a point, just like I did before, and you just go down, see what's radiating from this point go across the form see this guy's leg is coming from here this guy's arm so it looks like a lot of a lot of opportunity and design is taking place in this one so basically from this point we have about three areas that are locking in which isn't significant but it's definitely something that we can learn from so the next step is to desaturate the composition and then blur a little bit. So this is all done within the action. So you just turn it on. And now we can see Ruben's tonal values. Definitely see this is the lightest area right here. That's the what is that, the horse? Oh that's the guy's that's the guy's uh, skirt. We'll just take a look at that. We can see this is the dark area, that's that shadow area. And what we're looking for is the greatest area of contrast, which I've done in a video how to find it, but you take this desaturated layer and use the threshold adjustment layer here and you just adjust it up and down to find the lightest and the darkest area. So you slide it to the right, this is going to show you the lightest areas, and then you slide it to the left, it's going to show you the darkest areas. So what I do when I analyze these paintings is I basically I ignore the highlights up here in the, the sky, that's always going to be the lightest. So I bring it back down a little bit to show me the values of the characters and then I will push command option shift E and that'll merge everything to one layer and then you just push screen make it a screen mode turn this off and that's going to show you the lightest areas of your composition then I do that with the darks of it move it to the left ignore some of the really dark areas of the shadows and the ground so Use that same shortcut, set it to multiply. That's going to make the, the whites disappear. And then turn back the lights. And this will show us where 
our eyes typically will go when we're looking at the composition. And just because these are darks, the darkest darks, and these are the lightest lights, if they're not up against each other, that's fine. Don't mistake it that they have to be completely up against each other because when you look at simultaneous contrast, this light could be the lightest in the composition, but if it's surrounded by lighter values, then it's not going to stand out as much as this area, okay? So typically in a painting, you might want to consider having the darkest dark up against the lightest light, and that'll definitely, it'll tell them, look here, okay? That's what it's used for. So right here we see Rubens definitely using this robe as the lightest light. He's got this dark area here, which is drawing attention to this negative space here. And then we're, we're seeing this dark of the lion here. And it's followed down with shadows. He's created the GAC by creating this contrast and directing our eyes with his design to this location. He's doing everything he should. He's making the GAC here. He's creating a good figure ground relationship. He's directing our eyes with the radiating lines and the ellipses. And let's look at one last technique, which is the edge flicker. I call it the edge flicker. It's basically making you aware of any distractions near the edge, any areas of high contrast. So what I do is I'll just run my white brush around the edge and see where the area is conflict. So he's got a transition here from light to gray to dark. So that's good. This is going from dark to gray. Okay, so this is going around. This is all dark gray, dark gray. Dark. This is all looking good. Up here we can see a bit of contrast. A little bit darker right here and lighter here. But remember when you look at the sky, the sky is always going to be light no matter what. Since that's a natural occurrence in photos and paintings, then our eye naturally sees it as something that's normal and not a distraction. So we'll, we might see it, but we'll dismiss it right away and we won't look at it as a flaw. So keep going up and we go over because that's the sky. So He's got clean edges. Good job, Rubens. So that's Edge Flicker, and that concludes the video. Pretty easy, right? Anybody can do it. If you're a MasterPass member, you can download a checklist that I made, and it'll show you all these techniques. And as you're designing your composition, just start with your, your drawing, your gesture, work out the grid, and then go down the checklist and Make sure you check off some of these techniques. If you can check off all of them, then that's pretty awesome. You're following the footsteps of the masters no matter what. So that's all there is to it. I mean, you just it's laid out. Just learn one technique at a time and take, take baby steps. And eventually, you'll get the hang of it. And just keep applying it. It'll get easier. So thanks for watching. Be sure to stop by my website. There's a lot of free articles, a lot of artistic articles that can help you with your compositions, with design, and hopefully you'll be able to share it with others. And if the masters can do it, so can we. Okay, you just got to put in the time and learn the steps. So thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time. And if you have any questions or comments, please list them in the comments below. All right, take care.